I'm going to set up the Ricoh Theta X with this brand new Galaxy Tab A8 that I got during Black Friday for $200. I'm going to install the official Ricoh Theta app from the Google Play Store by typing in Theta, searching on it. I'm going to install Ricoh Theta. I've already read the terms of use from the previous install, so I'm going to accept it. The Ricoh Theta X is turned off, so even though I attempt a connection for the first time, it will fail, but once I turn on the Ricoh Theta X, the connection will succeed. So I'll first show you what happens when you don't turn on the camera. Uh, although it says Theta X on here, uh, when I attempt to connect, uh, it won't actually connect. But this can be easily solved by simply turning on the camera. So it's going to attempt to connect, and it will fail. So now on the side of the camera, the top button is the power button. So we will turn on the camera. So you might have to press and hold it maybe for a couple of seconds. Like two seconds and over would be a long press. The camera does take a bit of time to boot. Uh, it's no problem. In normal use, the camera you do put into sleep mode. So on the mobile app, I can now press the Theta X icon and it will attempt to establish its first connection. So I haven't configured it with any passwords or anything at this point. Um, and then it will connect. Uh, the ThetaX has a touch screen, so you may have to press some of the indicators on the ThetaX touch screen and also on the tablet. But now it's connected. It's not showing the preview screen because I previously had the ThetaX in 8K video mode. I'm going to test it out with a still image instead of the video. So I'm going to use the mobile app to switch it from video to still image mode. So at the top of the screen, there is the uh, camera icon. It looks like a kind of icon for a camera. So once you press that, you'll have the live preview mode. So the moving screen on the right side is to kind of frame the shot. It's a 360 camera, so you don't need to spend that much time framing it but you can see maybe what the lighting looks like. I think I have it currently set to 0.7 plus a positive EV. Um, even with the little bit bump on the EV, so the, the higher the EV, the lighter the image will be. Uh, it still looks a little dark in our office. Our office has relatively low lighting here and maybe I'm gonna overexpose it. So I think I'm going to actually set it to a a higher EV compensation. So in the lower left hand side of the screen you can see that it is uh, 0 0.7 EV. You press it, there's a slider here, you can increase it to 1.0 EV. This will make it brighter. So the higher the number, the brighter it is. You can also have a negative value for the EV compensation. I'm going to use HDR rendering. So HDR rendering will make the light and dark areas of the picture sharper. If you're not moving the cameras in a tripod, the best practice would be to use the HDR for most of the shots, although it does take a bit longer. If you're moving, uh, HDR will blur the shot. You can preview the shot here or push it up to the cloud. It is overexposed. It does make the office look very bright, but this is the effect that I'm looking for.